p.m. Hi everyone, and uh, a good morning, evening, uh, middle of the day, depending where you are. Uh, hopefully you can hear me all right. Um, I think the mic is still working. Let me know if there's any problems, as always. Uh, it's actually two o'clock now in, in England, so it's kind of like lunchtime, after lunchtime. Um, it's the only time I'm able to stream today. I'm going to try to get a another stream in tomorrow, maybe Saturday, Saturday morning, and I'm going to try to stream quite a lot up to up to Christmas. So hopefully you'll be uh, catching up with me. I just agreed to do a joint stream with Bigfoot. Don't know if you know Bigfoot. He's another uh, streamer on Chess.com, and we're going to do a, a joint stream on uh, on Monday actually at. 12 o'clock GMT so two hours earlier than this you know and I know a lot of you from all around the world who watch this so it's uh you might not all uh you know be able to get it at the right time um I don't know what time I'll do it tomorrow I'm very bad at planning in advance as you probably guess Cine Mormon Williams sounds a bit like me uh I'm really really bad I'm if you follow me on Twitter and on Facebook I promise well, I don't promise, but I'll try by the end of today to plan out the next week, and I'll also post it below uh, as well. So I'll try. I'll try to do that. Um, you know that 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 make life a bit easier for you guys, hopefully. And that's what I'm here for. I'm here to make your life a bit easier. Well, I try to, and that's one thing we're going to look at today. Thank you for subscribing. Um, GM around 1993. Uh, JM Round. I'm Mr. GM Round. Me, me and Fine Gold, of course. We're quite round, you know, down the midsection. But hey ho. Um, and yeah, so, well, what my arms are getting cut. They are, yeah, because look at that. They go into space, you know, they, they, they disappear into the space vacuum that's out there. Uh, <laughs> um, so, what are we going to do today? Well, um i think what we're going to do today is um i want to share with you um some practical tips on how to get better at chess um so that's that's what that's what i'm going to i'm going to do you now this might not be relevant to everyone because i expect a lot of you who watch my streams haven't played competitions you don't necessarily want to play in competitions uh, and maybe some of the things I'm going to talk about are maybe a bit above you um but I wanted to you know I mean the idea really at chess it, it is kind of a sport as as well as a number of uh, other things and um you know as a sport the idea is to get better it, it you know it is great fun playing in competitions I recommend it to everyone. It can be quite scary, but scary things are generally good. And, you know, the idea is to do as well as you can in them. So I wanted to share with you some tips about playing competitions. Uh, and I'm talking about real over the ball competitions where they are everywhere around. Um, and I want to tell you how I prepare at top, top level. So this is at really high level. I want to share with you my favorite websites and software that I use to prepare uh, and I want to just show you how I prepare for certain players etc and where I get my ideas from where I get my opening ideas from and I just want to maybe talk with you uh, about all of these all of these things uh, today and then later on in the stream I think we're probably play a long play game where I discuss my thoughts and, and we try to do something like that now you may have also noticed there's a little um, thing up the top and I hope this is working. If you do do a cheer out, you know those little emotes where you can donate a little bit of cash from a cheer. I think if you use this thing above, the charity thing, if you cheer with hashtag charity, then a bit of money um, from everything you cheer goes to charity. So that would be lovely on the build up to Christmas. So. Try to try to give that a go. Give a little bit to charity. You know, why not? Give a little bit to charity. And while while we're doing that, um, 
I, I again, I'd like to just say hello to everyone else who's now come along. So, hello to PPRTS. Great to have you here again. And JS1000, some regulars, Plo Crux. Uh, if I've missed you out, I apologize. Um, obviously, Mary Hatman, Gargon VGC, and Focalios. Um, and Focalios is saying, I find your master method your far best DVDs. What rating levels it meant for, I've ever asked some times now um well the 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 master method dvds i I wouldn't say dvds it's more of a course 15 hour course i in total i've done a master method one and a master method two okay thank you nog nog juice who who has done a cheer and, and donated some money to charity there so hopefully that has worked i really hope so i hope that has actually gone to the charity you know i'll find out at the end of this and double check i've got everything set up okay um hey aldo great to see you aldo um yeah a- and kato kato kid but hello aldo great to great to see you hopefully we'll catch up for a drink soon aldo before christmas um so what was i talking about oh the master method well they're 15 hour courses um so uh 15 hours um and the rating band i'd say is anything from I'd say 1,400 up to about 2,200. Most of the things I do, I try to um, make quite a, you know, I might try to make them quite open as I can. So if you're a beginner, hopefully you can understand it. But even if you're a, a competitive player, hopefully you take away some advice from everything I do. I mean, the DVDs I make, they're mainly opening DVDs and they're for quite higher level, I'd say, but you'd still get a lot out of them lower level. Okay, well, great to see some of you doing some cheers and, um, yeah, giving a little bit of money, as you can see, to charity. So, so far, it looks like about $40,000 has been raised for charity, which is great in the build-up to Christmas. And the whole of Twitch is doing this. I had to set this up, so hopefully we can get some money to... uh, to to direct relief and uh, and charities thank you for subscribing there uh rocky and and who else just subscribed i missed the other one oh sorry who was it who just subscribed let me have a look Uligun, Uligun, and amadam hello killian hope you're all right you still alive in ireland yo 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 killian to the killian um <laughs> it's been yeah well it's been a while since i've uh, senior, isn't it? Well, well Bun Ratty's kind of coming up, isn't it? So I might might see, catch you over there, um, for example. Okay. Anyway, so I'm going to start. I'm going to start talking about what really the theme of today is. So I haven't done this before, so it might be a car crash. Some of you might not like it, um, and some of you might like it. Who knows? I don't know. Oh, Rocky, uh, Rakesh. Oh, hello, Rocky. Good, good to good to see you, sir. Uh, good to see you, uh, Rakesh. Who I played Rakesh in a tournament very recently. A very nice, very lovely guy from India, and a bloody strong chess player. We had a very interesting game um, where lots of tactics were going on. So hello, and Killian is saying he had his Christmas work p- party last night. Oh dear, I bet you are struggling quite hard at the moment, Killian. Go and get yourself a hair of the dog. That's that. You know, go and get yourself a white Russian. Is a very good one. Vodka, Kalula, and milk. Um, God, sounds like I know a bit too much about drinking, doesn't it? I was actually up in Liverpool yesterday uh, doing a bit of work and seeing some friends. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I took it reasonably sensible. Where is Killian from? Killian is from Lovely Island. I believe you're from Dublin, Killian. Is that right? Is that right? Um, Thanks for subscribing, Rocky and everyone else. Okay, let's go back to what I was talking about. I keep losing track. I've got to stop losing track of what I'm doing. So I'm going to tell you how I prepare, and I'm going to tell you my favorite websites, things you should use if you want to get better at chess, books that I like, any little tips I can give. I'm going to start actually a bit lower level than I was planning. So some of you have maybe just started chess I might better help you out in in where you should go because it's really hard when you start playing chess to what you know what do you do to get better how do you learn how should you learn because I really think a lot of people learn in the wrong way you know if you're trying to get better at um, you know at chess you learn in the wrong a lot of people they they learn, they might spend five hours learning something which I would say is complete rubbish. It's learning the wrong thing. Learning the wrong thing can actually be worse than learning nothing. So I'm going to tell you things that have helped me 
get to a grandmaster you're you're here to learn the secrets of grandmaster prep are you at amadan well i'm sure you know you know most about it um now let me use an example from the last tournament i played in so i'm going to take you through precisely what i did in order to get ready for this tournament game now the last tournament i played in was let me just see um if i've got the website up here was over at the weekend and it was uh the london chess classic hopefully you can see that and it was the british knockout championships there was 12 of us playing and i got through to the quarter final where i played um the strongest british player of all time mickey adams and he took me out on the saturday i played the strongest uh strongest female of all all time from Britain and then I played the strongest male of all time I managed to beat Harriet Hunt the strongest female on the Saturday in the knockouts but then I lost to Mickey Adams who is a fantastic player but I want to I want to take you through how I prepared so let's hope this works out okay now I'm going to start with this and this is high level preparation and, and of course I do work for chess.com and um I think they're fantastic for their preparation, but I am going to be mentioning other pieces of software and websites which I use because I'm going to be honest, I think these are other great resources, but this is very high level. So I'm going to start at the highest level and then move down, uh, I think, with, with how you should prepare, basically. So I'm going to start, this is like, you know, the best of Britain, how we prepare for our games. And there's a couple of pieces of software which if you're a competitive player, I think you should have. Now, chess.com, of course, is fantastic. Um, and this is really good for the puzzles, the puzzle rush, playing. It's great. But another one which I use and I have on my laptop computer is the following. It is chess base. So I'm going to open that up now. And I'm probably going to share the screen with you. But you can let me just open up chess base now. So chess base is a software. And you can see here, um, I'm going to make the screen, I'm going, to, I'm going to capture the whole screen. So you have to say goodbye to my face. And I'm just going to take you through what I do. So say goodbye to my face. I'm sure that is a good thing for most of you uh, to get rid of my face. You know, I don't want to, we don't want to be scaring you with that. So I let me just grab this and I'll show you what I do. You can see that I have, oh, well, maybe I'll leave my chin. How about that? Chin, chin, -ity, chin, chin, chin. So you can see this is this is what's called chess base. And this is a piece of software, uh, which is Windows friendly. It doesn't work very well on a Mac. It only works on, um, should we say, PCs. All these things here, which you see, let me click on one, are different databases over the history of my life that I've built up and prepared. You can see the amount of work that I've spent on chess over my life. You know, each of these little things I'm clicking is a different database with games in. Now, when you buy chess base, okay, when you buy chess base, it comes free of charge. Well, normally you might have to pay for it, I'm not sure, with this thing here called Mega Base. So this is the basic one you get. This one here, which, follow my mouse. This one here, the one thing that I'm hovering over is um, basically this is uh, the one thing that you get free and what this is called mega database this is a database of nearly every recorded game in the history of chess so think about that it's got how many games has it got let me scroll down if i can uh, if i can go into it so i'm opening up oh what's happening here my my hang on that's my phone why is my phone making noises go away phone you shouldn't be making noises and okay i'm going to move this over here oh oh uh, let me just see okay you can see it in the background and i'm just looking how many games it's got in it's got something like seven million games so let's go back okay so it's got seven million games in it you can look at so how can that be of use to you how can that be of use to you so well the thing that i find it, how it is of use is let's say i'm playing mickey adams what's the first thing i'm going to do so i know who i'm playing i right click on this and it has can you see that you can't it has a search function i don't know why that's not popping up but i can search and i'm just going to actually have to uh, capture all these windows um as we go along so on the database i use it has a search function 
and you can see the search function up here okay there you go now in that search function you can put a name so I'm gonna put Adams if I spell it correctly Adams and I'm gonna put his first name Mickey and I was playing him actually in the first game with the white pieces so I'm gonna put him as the black pieces because I don't need to look at his white games we press ignore colors so there you go and then I press OK and that's gonna search every single game and excuse me while it does this every single game you can see them all come up there and I know the screen's a bit of a mess I'm just taking you through it's gonna be a little bit of a mess I do it this way there's other ways to do it but it, it takes every single game that Mickey Adams has ever played so you can go back to 1984 now what I do here I start by looking at his most recent games so I scroll all the way down to the bottom and you can see I have his most recent games and I'll go through some of his games and look you can see the little board there I'll get an idea of what he plays as black I will I normally play d4 so I may only look at what he does against this move can you see that on the board d4 and then I can see that in most games he plays this setup knight f6 and e6 so this is the first thing I do now let me let me get rid of most of these uh, things now that we don't need them any more uh, for the time being so I will have an idea then what he plays okay so that that is great for when I'm doing individual uh, preparation because already I know what I'm gonna get over the board most likely so I know I'm probably gonna get by searching his games this position so what would my next step be and this is preparation for individual opponents but it's also great for improving uh, you can do this in many different things if you want to improve a certain opening if you want to do there's many ways you can do this many many ways there's other databases you can do this with I'll mention it now if you can't afford chess base if you can't afford chess base which is a lot of money I think it costs I don't know free about 300 pounds maybe 400 pounds to get the whole package it's very expensive what can you use that is free okay well let's have a look so I'm going to show you a site which I use which is free uh, so let me just capture the whole screen again and this is one that you can use that is free there might be other ones I'm just telling you what I do so I'm just gonna this this screen here is basically my whole computer screen so you can see the taskbar at the top I'll make it a little bit bigger and I know this might be a little bit um, confusing and here I'm gonna create another bar here so what's another good website can you see the taskbar oh uh, yes can you see that I hope so Can't. I know it might be a bit small so I apologize you can see it up here can't you yes you can so another great one is chess games okay there you go now this is a free one I think it's a good one loads of people moan about this loads of people say that chess games is a rip-off um, I think chess base don't like them because they basically written them off but this is a free one here and you can see the certain um, the certain search functions here so you can put a player in here you can search their games you can also search openings, so it's a good way to do that um, and one thing I often do I'm gonna go to Google now one thing I often do on Google so let me go to Google let's get rid of mr. Trump we, we don't want to see him one thing I do on Google is um, basically search let's say I want to search a certain opening like the Queen's Gambit I just search the Queen's Gambit chess games I press enter and then someone has prepared a list of games in that opening so I click on that and you can see it has a list of games in that particular opening so I can go through all the games maybe of Kasparov and I can try to learn from what Kasparov has done and that is a good way to look at ideas that the top players are playing so these kind of things are is high level preparation and I might be losing a lot of you here it's a bit of a different stream but I want to share with you what I do um, I like the way someone says I deleted my history before doing this I actually actually there's nothing I'm really that worried about because my you know it's a work computer um, but yes uh, <laughs> I sort of suddenly did have that image oh god um, but um, so so this this is the kind of stuff I do now what I do let's say I have this position in mind that I'm gonna play against Mickey I will then do another search function on chess base and this is really important and I want to just share with you the one more thing there that I, I do and this is your basic stuff you're preparing and this is what makes a massive difference if in competitive chess between 
a player who's 2,000 and a player who's 2,400. The 2,400, if they do the right steps, they're going to have a battle thing already prepared against their opponent. And in any international tournament, well, most international tournaments, you generally have one game a day in England. It starts at 2 p.m. In the, the day before, the evening before or the morning, you will know who you're playing. So you'll be able to do this every day. I normally do two hours preparation for my opponents in the morning. So I, I'm, I get into the battle with a head start. And um, right, so let me just show you now in chess. I'm going to go back to chess base. There's other things you can use. How I you then use chess base if I know this position we can see here. What do I do then? This is really important, I think. Um, so I'm going to remove this. I'm going to go back to chess base and I have chess base on my laptop. So what I, I generally do two hours when I'm taking it very serious, Killian, I'll be honest. I mean, because I don't do much work at other points in my life. I do, I think, two hours work for my opponents, an hour or two hours, depending. It has to be done. It helps me a lot. Um, OK, so I'm going to go back to mega base. Follow the mouse. So I know now that... I'm going to search, okay, let, I did that a bit quick, so follow the mouse. So I know I go to board up here, okay, so I'm going to press on board, and you can't actually see this, but a big board has come up, you can see that, and I know on this board that this position is probably going to be reached, right? This position here, okay, so you can see that. So I'll set up the position on the board, and again, this is just showing you how Grandmasters prepare. I go back to uh, Mega Base. And I go to the search function again. So I go and press the search function. Let me just screen capture the search function so you can see. Um, and this is basic. I'm sure everyone who plays in tournaments does this nowadays. You can see that there. Right, so now I'm going to put in um, just the position. You see there's a thing here. I'm going to press position. I'm going to copy the board so it comes up with this position. And then I'm going to press OK. And that's going to search in the database in the database, okay, I hope you're following this, in the database, every single game, every single game that has been played in this position. Now, you can also, if you go to game data, put in your opponent's name. So you can put in Mickey Adams here and find out every game he's played in that. But for now, I'm just going to search the position. So that is now searching. It's going to take a little bit of time to search. You can see that doing that. Let me get rid of some of these screens because they're probably annoying. And now, what do I do here? Well, I don't want to. I don't want to look at the games of. Don't. I don't want to be rude, but the weaker players, because I'm not going to learn anything from them. So I'm white. You can see there's a button here, Elo White. I press that, and now it will list all of those games, and there's thousands of them. It will list it, and it will start off with the top-rated players who have played this as white, and that is perfect because now I can see how Magnus Carlsen, the world champion plays these positions as white so i can learn from the best players in the in the things i want to do you can also see some of the games are annotated and i think these are brilliant help so for example stephen gordon a good friend of mine has annotated the game so i can look through the game and i can think oh right okay so my opponent this is a very interesting plan and i try to gauge the plans of the interesting, you know, which I think are good, which the top players have played. Okay, so let me get rid of that now. I'm going to close that down. So I'd flick through the games. I get an idea in mind what the top players are playing, and I would also um, basically, um, I would use that to get my game plan together to think of, uh, you know, a strategy of what I'm going to play against my opponent, and often that helps me greatly. Now, you also need a computer engine to help. Now, chess.com has a brilliant one. So what you can do with those games, you can import them into chess.com, which I've done here with a game I played. And then you can run the computer on it. So that's a great way to save money. The computer I have, I got it free because I actually work for Chessbase as well occasionally, not as much as chess.com, but I do do DVDs to them. I have, let me bring up this one, Komodo 12, which is, it's strong enough. It's probably one of the strongest ones in the world. I don't need anything stronger. Komodo 12 is uh, incredibly strong. And let me just see if you can, I'm going to just show you Komodo 12. Here you go. This is the computer I have. Now, what you can do in chess space, when you have a position on the board, 
and I will do it again. And I, this has actually taken me, it's, it's really quite intense, all this learning and how to, to improve for tournaments, but I thought it might be useful to do. So with chess base, let me just do, open up chess base again, and I'm going to get a random position on the board. Okay. And now in this position, if I right click, it says you can't see it, but let's move it over here. If you right, oh, no, it doesn't like that, does it? Okay, this thing, add kibitzer. Can you see that? Now, if I press that button and I can open up Komodo 12 and Komodo 12 opens up somewhere and it's just loading up because, of course, it takes a bit of time. And you can see over here, we have the evaluation of the position. So whenever I'm looking at a position, whenever I'm looking at those the way I've done it before, I'll have Komodo 12 running. So... Komodo 12 can tell me if the annotators are correct or if it finds an interesting idea. So that's another thing which is very important. Have a good engine running when you're preparing your positions. So it's a lot of stuff going on here. A lot, a lot of stuff. I don't know about Layla. I mean, I want everything in one in one place. I want to have everything in one place. So I use everything in chess space. I obviously do use chess.com a lot as well for other stuff. But when I have my laptop... You don't need to be online for chess base. You can be offline and I can prepare on my laptop very easily and I get ideas of opponents. So what other websites do I think are fantastic? We'll come to chess.com a bit later on. Well, another one. Let me just um, do another one which I use and I, I suggest if you're a serious player, you've got the money, you want to learn about your openings and this is probably the one which I use the most and I'm just going to screen capture my whole screen. So hopefully the taskbar is all right again. Don't give me any disasters, taskbar. Please don't. Um, and here's my whole screen here. So I'm just going to make it bigger so you can see where I'm going. Another site which professionals use, I think, is Chess Publishing. So let me just put that in. And this site, Chess Publishing, um, here we go. I'm going to press Enter. And I'm going to go to the site is one of the best opening sites as well. Um, is that Selena, Selena? Hello, Selena. Is that Selena? Hi, Selena. How are you doing? Hopefully you're all right. You're back from uh, Australia uh, and you were out with Keith last night. Gutted. Gutted I couldn't see you last night. Charlie the Chess Cat is K as well. So uh, hopefully you're doing all right, Selena. Great to see you in the stream. I'm basically doing a little sort of stream on how you should prepare for tournaments, but hopefully you can have a chat with you later, Selena. Um, so here you have it. And here, this is a great site because on this site, every month it's updated on certain openings by a Grand Master. So if I click on here, look, you've got an international master, you've got a leading expert, and he has a look at all the latest games, and you can download all these games. And the great thing is, you can download all the games to your uh, chess base. So you can download them all to chess base. So you've got them in that database. So you have, you they, then here you're compiling this major database of like stuff, which is just firepower. So when you go into battle, you are, you are really well prepared for battle. So I really do recommend chess publishing if you're serious. Download their latest databases. And um, it is a fantastic way to um, to learn, to learn it and get better. Um, now, uh, other sites I wanted to say, well, the other thing you've got to do, and this is like top level. So, okay, now let me talk about um, how I used this myself when I um, was facing uh, Britain's best player, Mickey Adams. So um, we will uh, da, 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 have a look at that now. Um, I'd love to, Selena. I, I, I got back from Liverpool very late yesterday. Um, today, a bit of a headache. Um, and tomorrow, I was supposed... Or tomorrow's Friday, isn't it? I was supposed to be seeing Mr Adam Hunt on Saturday. So it would be great to pop down to the London Classic um, and, you know, pop down there. Maybe, maybe we can convince... Okay, to do that and have have some drinks would be fantastic. So we'll see. Um, okay, so anyway, going back to today's whatever I'm doing lesson kind of thing. Um, so basically, I know I'm playing Mickey, and uh, this is actually the game. So I'm going to show you the game I had against him now and tell you how all this has come together. Now, when I was playing Mickey, I used all the things I've been talking about, and I saw 
that the opening he likes playing best is this position here with black. So I was actually expecting to get this position as white against him. So I had already prepared some ideas here. Now in this position, I normally play bishop to f4. And this is what Magnus Carlsen played against Fabiano Caruana. Um, and this is what Magnus basically played against him at the World Championships. But he didn't get any advantage with this move. And the other thing is, you've got to think what your opponent's thinking. And I knew that Mickey would be prepared for this move. I've lost twice against Mickey by playing this move before. And I didn't want to walk into his preparation. So I played my bishop to g5, which is the old main line. This is the old main line. And the idea of this is to pressurize d5. Because the knight on f6 defends d5. So if I can try to get rid of that little guy there, not by headbutting him, that'd just be weird. That's just weird, isn't it? We don't headbutt knights off the board. I don't know why I was doing that. It's a little bit odd. Go, go. Um, oh, I've got a headache now. Oh dear, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, okay. If I can get rid of that knight, then d5 becomes weak. So you've got to think, when you develop your pieces, what are the advantages of developing and the disadvantages? Um, so that's the advantages. I mean, the advantage of developing here is quite a nice diagonal. There's pressure on that diagonal. Um, in a chess game where both sides play perfectly, does white win? Um, I don't bloody know. I mean, I expect it's a draw. I expect it's a draw. But I've never played a perfect game, and I doubt many people have, so it's a pretty strange question. Um, but I don't know. But I think a draw is correct. It must be a draw, mustn't it? It must be. It must be a draw. Probably a draw. You know, we're not, we're not, we haven't conquered chess yet. I mean, there's more, there's more um, possibilities in a game of chess, so more possible moves than atoms in the known universe is, is one, uh, you know, one, one sort of uh, fact that was said. People say there's infinite number of chess moves. Well, there's not really, is there? You know, there must be a finite number of chess moves but it's actually more than atoms in the universe i can't remember what i can't remember what uh, some mathematician worked this out and, and some mathematician basically uh uh basically sort of gave the number if you if you search it you find it on google or saying um but i don't know i mean it's really hard to work out anyway i went bishop g5 and i had a particular idea in mind i saw that mickey played h6 because i've been using chess base as i've done before I've searched Shannon's number, that's it, that's it, not Shannon's map, yeah, Shannon's number, that's the one. Um, and here I had prepared this move, and I saw that Mickey Castle's here, and in this position I had seen that uh, my opponent, Mickey Adams, nearly always plays b6 in this position. And this is what I had, as I said before, going through the processes I've shared with you earlier, I had this position on my computer in the morning, I had... Uh, a computer Komodo 12 running on this position. I'd also searched all games on chess base in this position. I had a look at what some of the top players were playing. Um, I saw there's a number of positional ways to play. And what I was thinking here, and this is very important when you know your opponent, is where what are my opponent's strengths? What are my opponent's weaknesses, if there are, are any? What are my strengths and what are my weaknesses? And what I want to do is get my opponent into a position where he's uncomfortable. So here, a normal plan would be something like rook c1, you play positional, you slowly develop, you castle kingside, yawn, 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 and you get a boring positional game, which is fine. I say boring, it's not that boring. Um, I did not want to do that against Mickey Adams because he is... Um, one of the most positional players ever. He's one of the best manoeuvrers in chess ever. Uh, I think that's actually fair to say. He's a brilliant, brilliant chess player. Um, so I wanted something complicated. So when I was searching on chess base, I was looking for complicated ideas to make this position as, as crazy as possible. And I came across one game when I was going through that list and I can, you know, I've gone through the process of how I did that. I basically went onto Mega Base. I searched this position. I looked at the games of top players. I was looking for an interesting, crazy type of position. I found a game of Grischuk's where, in this position, Grischuk played the move G4, and I thought 
blooming neck that would that is gonna really that's gonna really put off mickey he didn't go b6 no he didn't aldo give me a chance i'm getting to it. i'm talking about my prep first aldo <laughs> this is what i was thinking in the morning this is how i was preparing before the game i thought right i saw a game with this one i put it on the computer the computer actually thought that white was uh worse after playing g4 but that doesn't really bother me. This is one thing that people get um, transfixed by. It doesn't matter necessarily if you're worse. It's getting the right kind of position. It's getting the kind of position you want to get. I'll let you off this time, Aldo. Just this time, son. Uh, thank you for the cheer out, by the way, Petrol Stale, mate. Um, by the way, as you can see, if you do do a cheer out, include the hashtag charity and some money goes to charity. Not the Ginger GM charity either. Some proper charity um so g4 was a line i saw and I'll, I'll show you actually i've got that game prepared so here we go so the g4 one was this is the game that i found on chess pace and i found this position now i'm going to share with you because what i've done i've imported this into chess.com you can get the game from chess pace you can put it into any other program so if you prefer chess.com you can put it in here and you get the free computer then and I'll show you again how useful this game was to me. And this is what I was doing in the morning. You can see how intense preparation is. You can see here, and this is basically all the analysis um, that is with the game. So G4, given as interesting move. And after G4, there are many different variations. So I went through the variations with the computer. I had a little look, so I had an idea what I was going to play. And I had a look at the main game. And another thing which is so important which beginners don't do and lower rated players do not do look when you're learning an opening and this is key for lower rated players and we're going to come down to you know if this is a bit above your head what i'm talking about i'm going to come down to give you advice lower rated what you should be doing look if you're a thousand rated or 1200 rated if you're trying to learn an opening how do you learn it let's say you brought a book and this is a bloody good one the new sicilian dragon by who's it by uh oh i recognize that chap very, very, very good writer. One of the best opening writers around. And if you go, if you go through the book, what a lot of opening books do not do, they just tell you the opening moves, but do not tell you the ideas that you want to be playing in the middle game kind of position. So, for example, if you play G4, what is the idea? And when you play a particular move, you need to know what you're trying to achieve in the middle game. So what ideas you're trying to achieve in the middle game, how where, where your pieces should go, what pawn structure you want, how you're going to attack. You should also be thinking, just important, where does your opponent want to put his pieces? You aim to stop that. Where does your opponent want to put his pawns? Try to stop that. You want to make your opponent's life as difficult as possible. So you need to be thinking about this when you're playing and this is not even against a particular opponent you guys should all be doing this at home when you pick an opening it doesn't matter who your opponent is the position is the position what are you trying to do in that position and that's really what what you've got to be asking yourself so i know with g4 what what's the idea of this crazy move okay well first of all first of all if knight takes g4 um the, one of the main ideas is, and this is what was played in the Lico game, is bishop takes bishop, and now the knight is not defending this one, so we just go pawn takes d5, and we win our pawn back. So that's one idea there. Now, in actual fact, this position, I'm just going to show you a couple more moves, and this is what I was looking at in my preparation. I was looking at this position with queen d6, attacking the knight. I had a look at knight c3, and after c5... I didn't really like White's position. I didn't really like White's position. Perpetual stalemate. I do get a bit of cash as well. Uh, some of it goes to charity, some of it goes to me. So that's a win-win situation in my book. And I didn't like this position so much. So I thought, okay, but I like the idea of G4. And I know this is really longed out, what I'm uh the tips I'm giving you. Um, I am giving tips. I'm giving. I'm trying to give as many tips as I can in the two hours I've got here. This is basically like a, a grandmaster. You're getting a free grandmaster lesson here, which if a grandmaster was doing, they'd probably pay you for. I know I'm doing it quite general. I'm not doing anything really specific today, but I'm trying something new. Maybe you hate the lesson. Well, you can always turn over. 
Um, so this is the, one of the ideas of G4 is to, so this, you've got to be thinking, what, why am I trying to do this plan? So one idea is to weaken D5. Now another idea clearly and is to try to play G5 because my opponent's pawn is on H6 and that pawn is a target. So at some point I might want to play G5 and I might want to try to take on H6 and open up the open file and attack my opponent's king. And the other idea is if g5 and black takes it, I can get a piece into g5 and attack the king. But you have to be a bit careful. For example, let's say bishop b7. If I play g5 now, what is a good move for white here? For black here? What's a good move for black here? So let's say I play g5 straight away here. And remember, this is what I'm telling you now is everything I'm thinking in the morning before I've actually even got to my game with Mickey Adams. This is everything that's going through my head. On my computer, I have this position. On my computer, I'm looking at this. This is my build-up to the game. I haven't even got to the game yet. I've got the build-up to the game. This is what I'm going through. Um, so this this is what I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of the, these ideas. I'm checking them with the computer. I'm checking them on chess space. I'm checking on chess.com as well. Because chess.com, you can put the computer on there. You can save them there. I'm doing loads of stuff. So here, what is a good move? Well, the problem here is that the black knight can move. I mean, if black takes on g5, we can just take back with probably, I don't know which one, let's say the bishop, and I've achieved my goal because I can get my rook to g1 and I can start an attack. This is what I want against Mickey Adams. But the problem is this bishop is a little bit weak, so black can play knight to h7, and that bishop is now, the pawn is pinned to the bishop. So I'd love to take on h6 here, but after bishop takes h4, the, remember, when I'm looking at this, as I've explained earlier, I have this position, whether it's on chess.com or chess base, I have the computer running, and if the computer tells me that this position is minus one or minus two, minus one I might even play. I might even play a minus one position. I don't mind that sometimes. If I've got my opponent out of theory, and it's an exciting position, which I like doing. But if it's a position like this, where I've sacked a piece, and it's the computer says it's a load of rubbish, which it does, and it did, I say, okay, well, I can't play this, can I? I can't do this line, because I'm a piece down. I'm not really attacking. If I take here, well, so what? My opponent can even move the rook, and I don't really believe this. He's got a lot of, I, I haven't got any pieces attacking his king here, so I can't play this. So let's go back. So what I would be thinking here, and what I was thinking in the morning, is if he goes bishop b7, okay, so what do I play? What do I do here? Well, I was thinking, well, first of all, I, I'd probably go rook to g1, because my rook wants to be here anyway. And now if my opponent plays a normal move like knight bd7, well now g5 certainly becomes an idea. Because if the same line occurs, knight h7, I take here, he takes here. Now I have the option of rook takes g7 check. And this is very different. Now I have quite an interesting attack. Maybe with a queen coming here threatening checkmate. But of course I would check this with the computer. And I did. And the computer did say that black can defend this position. So then I thought right well if we get this. And this was actually in the annotations. What should I do? And I then thought well one of my main ideas here is once I get this set up. And remember, when I'm playing the idea G4, I need to know what ideas I'm going for. I can first take on F6 because that gets rid of the problem of my bishop. If my opponent, Mickey, takes back with the knight, now I play G5 and I open him up. He has to take, otherwise I'll take on H6. And this idea is much stronger when there's a pawn on H6. Because if you imagine that pawn was back on H7... Black would just be able to move his knight, and I wouldn't be able to open him up now. So my g-pawn has not really achieved anything. I need to achieve something. But here, if he moves his knight, I can win a pawn and attack. So black would have to take here, and after something like knight takes, I have the position I want. This is exactly the attacking position I want. My queen can maybe come round to attack. I can castle queenside. My rook is ready, and I've got the kind of position I want but that my opponent, Mickey Adams, who doesn't really, his one weakness, it might be his one weakness, I can't really say that. The only thing I can see in his games, when I was looking at his games, his one weakness is 
that he might not like being attacked in complicated positions. So um, this was one of those situations. So, um, so that's what I was thinking. But I was looking at these lines and the one line that put me off with g4 was actually this line, which I showed you earlier. Knight takes g4, bishop takes, and then this was what Peter Lico played and c5. And I didn't like this because it felt like black was opening up the center of my king in the center. So what I was actually doing, oh, massive shout out by Liquid, Liquid, Liquid Egg Product. Interesting name, Liquid Egg Product. Um, and that's very kind of you. Thank you for the cheer. By the way, if you do do a cheer, um, I take some of the money, but some of the money, as you can see above, does go to charity. So from that cheer that was just made, I believe one dollar of it went to charity, which is fantastic. Very, very good. And if we can keep doing that, well, you know, we can do a little bit for Christmas as well as doing a bit for the Ginger GM Whiskey Fund, Christmas Whiskey Fund, Christmas Day. Um, so what I was thinking, and I think this was a new idea, I was then thinking, OK, so if Mickey plays B6 against me, we will get to the game very soon. If he plays B6 against me, well, what am I going to do? Well, I thought, well, I could play G4 now straight away, but Knight takes G4, I don't really like. So I then had an idea, what if I played Rook G1 first? And this looks crazy. This looks like, and I think it's a new move. It's never been played before up to this point. And the idea is I want to do the same thing but I want to stop the one line that I was worried about, knight takes g4. So, for example, what should black do against this really weird-looking move? And remember, I have an idea. Well, if he plays bishop b7, I now go g4, and I've cut out the one line that I was slightly worried about because now my g-pawn is coming. So rook g1 was actually the novelty I had prepared. I didn't get a chance to play it. I'm probably giving away all my preparation. Um, and well, the little bit of, I'm going to come to club level after this, Tony. The one thing I would say is a lot of what I'm giving you today, you can use at club level. I've already shown you how to use chess base. If you're trying to prepare your own openings, for example, um, let's say you decided to play, uh, this, this opening, you go through the bits of advice I told you earlier, go to chess base or here or, or the free chess games, search the position. Look at what the top players do. Try to look at the plans they use. Look at the annotations. Have a little look at what the computer says, but don't get obsessed with that. Try to look at the annotations. Go to Chess Publishing. Chess Publishing has annotations. Look what grandmasters say. Learn from grandmasters. If you're trying to learn an opening, do you prefer books or do you prefer DVDs? I actually learn a lot better through video. So it, rather than getting chess books, you don't need chess books. I know so many players who have got a library of chess books that they've never looked at. I go to their house and they've got they've got basically wall-to-wall -wall chess books and I'm thinking, bloody hell, how many of these do you actually read? And they don't, and when you ask them, they're like, hmm, well, I read about five pages of that one on the top shelf once. So work out what works for you for learning. I think video is great and, and, you know, obviously the Ginger Gem DVDs are the best chess chess.com become a diamond member of chess.com and i'm not just saying this the reason i think that is fantastic idea to do if you become a diamond member where you pay a monthly subscription is they have a monstrous database let me just go there quickly i hope this doesn't lose the games so um for example if you're a diamond member i hope i'm a diamond member i'll, I'll have to have words with danny wrench if i'm not a diver uh, a diamond member so let me just show, show you how you can use it on chess.com. And this is more for club players. So I'm just going to capture the screen, my whole screen now. And on chess.com, one of the best ways to learn something, on the left, you have all these things. Go to learn. And just one of the amazing things which you get as a Diamond member is videos. Click on videos. And you, oh my God. Oh, God. Oh, jeez. Jeez. Oh, actually, forget everything I said. Do not go to the video section because you might get a heart attack. Oh, straight in the face. I'm only joking. Calm down, people. Calm the hell down. Oh, my God. I nearly puked. Uh, I'm joking. I'm joking. Ugh.
<coughs> Only some water, please. Give me the bucket. Give me the bucket. I need my bucket. My sick bucket. Please. Please give me my bloody sick. Okay, I'm joking. Okay, so you've got all these videos which you can watch. And look, there's loads of them. And you can search for the video you want to watch. So look, over here, you've got openings, endings, amazing games. You've got a search button. So let's say you want to learn the Queen's Gambit. Now, I hope they have videos on the Queen's Gambit. Otherwise, I'm going to look a bit stupid, aren't I? Let's search there and see what happens. And look, you have hundreds of videos. Not, oh, that's better. We have Shanklin back on. And we have Shanklin. Shanklin is um, he's a brilliant player. He's one of the best players. He can teach you how to play the Queen's Gambit. I mean, how bloody good is that? So I'm not just saying that um, as an employee of chess.com, but what a great way to learn. What a, And that's just one of the things that chess.com has. They have this massive video section where you can learn, you can learn an opening from what they got. So it does, it really does help. Okay, let's go back to uh, my game, my preparation with Adams. Now, okay, so I was going to play, just to let you know, I was going to play, um, and I'm giving away my top level opening secrets here. I was going to play the new move, Rook G1 here, because I wanted to get an interesting, crazy position against Ben Feingold. By the way, thank you for the shout out there, uh, Perpetual. When you try to advertise chess.com, there's a page full of Ben. I mean, Ben, Ben, people love Ben. He's, I mean, come on. I'm always, we, you know, we're always having little digs. And I lost the match to him. He played better than me. I'd love to get a rematch. One day, one day I'll be back. I'll be back. But he's a, he's a great teacher, uh, you know, so I, I, I can't deny that. Well, I can, but, you know, just, just, oh, my God. Why? Why did you do it to me? Why did I have to see that face? It's not even dinner time. I haven't even had lunch yet. How am I going to eat after that? How am I going to eat? How is my stomach going to... Okay, right. So, going back to my game against Mickey. Okay, so after E3, Mickey must have um, smell to rat. Must have smell to rat. And he played knight BD7. So, remember, this is actually how my game went um, uh, against Mickey Adams, uh, Britain's best ever player, the knockout championships um only on sunday gone mickey 2700 at the moment but he's been he's been top five in the world for a long long time and here i thought right well look i haven't looked at it in this position but why not go g4 anyway and i thought okay this is the idea i was looking at in the morning so i'm going to play it anyway because it seems to be the same sort of idea if my opponent takes it here well, I actually think now I prefer this to what I had before because the bishop is not able to come to b7. So I don't need to go rook g1 first. And this worked out perfectly. And this, this preparation worked very well. For example, here, uh, Mickey did a very sensible thing. I'm doing a wing attack. So he tried to attack me in the center of the board. He tries to open up the position where my king is. Um, I didn't prep G4, actually, Aldo. I, I mean, I told you all the prep I did was against B6. So everything I did in the morning was against this move. Um, and I did not expect him to go knight B D7. But this is what I talked about earlier. The best way for lower rated players, which, you know, most of you watching this, I doubt there's, you know, many people higher rated players than me. Um, might watching this even. Um, there might be. But what I'm trying to say is, if you know the ideas, and this is kind of middle game, you could say it's really opening middle game, but the idea, the idea is the most important thing. And I know the idea is to go G4, G5. So even if I don't get, even if my opponent surprises me, which he did with this move, as long as you know the idea, then you can still play these ideas in the, in the middle game. And not many chess books tell you this. I think our Ginger GM DVDs do. But I don't think chess books necessarily do. So it's it's really important to um, to to you know to basically make sure you know the ideas. Anyway, I went G4. Uh, why didn't I go Rook G1 first? Alex is saying, well, I could have done, but I wasn't as worried as I mentioned about my opponent taking here now, because I think in that last line, because his bishop's not developed, I, I thought that this variation. This is the only reason. 
this is the only reason that I should be playing rook g1 if I'm scared of this move. But I thought in this forced position here, I was okay. Because compared to it where my opponent has a pawn on b6, he seemed like he's a bit behind in development here. So I don't know. Uh, seven more followers to 10k. Is that me? Is that 10,000 followers I get if I get seven more? Is that right? I don't know. Follow me, people. Follow me. I don't. I have no idea how many followers I've got. Um, anti Chris <laughs> with a T on the end. Um, anyway, after G4, he played C5, and I just continued my idea because I know the plan. Rook G1, and my plan here is, as I've said before, either to sacrifice a piece and take here, or to first take on F6. And then go g5. So as long as you know the plans, you should be getting a good position. So let's say my opponent plays b6, trying to get the bishop here. Now I have to calculate, do I go g5 straight away or do I take on f6 first? I'd like to play g5 straight away because it seems more aggressive. But the line I'd have to consider is something like we looked at, knight h7, taking here, giving up a piece, taking here. And now I have to think, do I, 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 I've sacrificed a piece. Yes, I have two pawns, but it's not enough. Do I have enough compensation here? And actually, when I was looking at this, I thought, I thought this was a very interesting position if I played queen c2. Threatening checkmate. My opponent probably has to go f5, blocking the queen. And now I thought, well, I can take on d5. And now I have three pawns for the piece. I'm kind of destroying his center. I'm going to castle queenside quickly. My bishop's coming in. And I thought maybe I can play this. Maybe I can play this kind of idea. So after rook g1, in actual fact, Mickey was looking a little bit, a little bit uh, um, uh, unhappy. I'll have to have a look at that clip later, Charlie, and, and, and maybe maybe we can put it on tw on 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 Twitter. Maybe we can get we can like you know do another challenge towards Ben for another death match. I cannot hear his voice though next time. Again, it can't happen. We have got to do it separately. Anyway, Mickey now took on d4, and here I have, uh, um, I basically, da, 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 highlights of the month. Oh yes, that's a good point, Aldo. We have to do a highlight of the month for that one. Uh, it's not really a highlight though, is it, Aldo? You, you really think that was a highlight of my month, opening up that page? Was that really a highlight of my month? I can think of something else to, to define it as. Okay, so what I thought here, um, the most interesting move was knight takes. Why did I want to take the knight? So I'm, I'm going through my thought process of playing one of Britain's best ever players. Number one, now my queen is unblocked. So um, my queen might be able to get over to this square. So let's say my opponent plays a nothing move. If I do that last line we had before, well, in this position now... Because my knight's not on f3, may maybe even my queen can come over somewhere like here or here. Maybe. This is something I was thinking. I thought that could be useful. I also thought that one of my opponent's main ideas, because he's trying to play in the centre of the board, what I'm attacking on the wing, was to play e5. And if he plays e5 in this position, then my knight has a very nice square. It was Gary Kasparov, who was one of the first people who mentioned... Gary Kasparov mentioned that when you have a knight on f5, when you have a knight on f5, it is worth a pawn because it's a great attacking piece. This is against a castled king. So if I just highlight those two pieces, having a knight on f5 is fantastic because you can attack a lot of his position with that knight. So I thought having a knight here was a very good idea. Now, of course, Mickey is a very good player, so he doesn't want to sit in this position and let me do my plan. Maybe I bring my queen to f3 first, castle, do this. He wants to do a counterattack, so he went knight to e4. Good move. I have to swap bishops, and now I wanted to maybe simplify the position somewhat, so I took on d5. Now, here, I think my opponent played a mistake. My opponent played a mistake in this position. So I've taken here. Now, can you improve on Mickey Adams' play? And this is a, maybe another... Uh, shows a slight weakness in his game. I don't want to be rude because he's the best British player of all time. And he still is uh, the best British player. But maybe he doesn't like unbalanced positions where he has to sacrifice always. 
So he has a good move here. I'm just going to see some of your suggestions. Uh, thank you for the kind comments, Alex. I will talk about I will talk about lower rated players and how you, if you're lower rated, you can uh, improve your game with some tidbits and, and good websites and other things in a second. But let's just stick with the way this is going so far. Well, knight takes c3 is what he played. Knight takes c3 is what he played uh, in this position. Um, queen b4. Um, I may even just go queen b3 there uh, in actual fact. Um, and I'm not sure about that. Hello, Chess Pats of Wiltshire. Queen h4. I take his knight on e4, so he loses a piece. Uh, ah, MC Squeegee. Hello, MC Squeegee. Aldo, very, very good. Very, very, very good. Remember, if he plays e5 at any moment, Tony, I might take his knight, but it gives up this square. Whenever you play a pawn move, you have to be very careful playing pawn moves. Every pawn move weakens some square. Even g4 weakens some squares, like h4, because I can't play g3 anymore. Now, this move weakens f5, and my knight gets very good. But the move I was scared about was if Mickey now played knight to c5 and basically says, I'm not going to have you attacking me. Look, where are you going to put your king, Simon? You can't castle kingside anymore. Castling queenside is risky because it's still very open on the open file. If you leave your king in the in the middle of the board, I don't mind if, if, if you sack a pawn, if, if I lose a pawn. I just want to open up the lines towards your king and I want to develop my pieces, mainly the knight and the bishop, as quickly as possible. Now, this would have been a fantastic move from my opponent. But he was maybe out of his comfort stage. He was maybe out of his comfort stage. I am 40. If you want to watch this from the start, you can see above there's a thing called videos. When this stream is over, you can replay the stream in the video. Maybe I'll put it up on YouTube, even this one. Um, and of course, if you want to support this stream, I should remind everyone, please do, uh, you know, you can donate to, to, to me. You can do a cheer. Some of that goes to charity, so I'd prefer that at the moment. Or even better, you can subscribe to this channel. Subscribing to this channel uh, does give you benefits, and that would be a way to really support what I do. Subscribe to the channel. It's free if you do it in uh, Prime. For a month, you know, and then if you don't like what I do, you can go and follow Ben Feingold or someone. Um, so, um, I think after uh, uh, Knight C5, I'm only joking, calm down, people. After Knight C5, I didn't like my position because I thought, well, let's say I take here, even if he just plays Bishop takes, I'm a pawn up, but what do I do with my king? And this would have been a very clever idea from Mickey because he suddenly realized that maybe the pawn is not important. I don't like defending, so he can turn the table on me. His rooks are coming quickly into the game. He has very nice development, a very good central knight. You know, he may even try to play f5 and open up the position more. I did not really like this position. So this was this was this was quite scary. But my strategy had worked out, and if we go back to what was actually played, Mickey took on c3. And now he just took his pawn back on d5. And all of a sudden, what we always need to do drawing our games of chess, especially when the position has clarified a bit, we've just gone uh, we've just gone through a bit of a forced sequence, many exchanges, so now it's time to reevaluate the position. We need to think, what is good about my position, pawn structure, what pieces are good, what plans should I be doing? This is what you should all be, be thinking in the middle game. This is a middle game. Pieces, pawns, plans for yourself and also for your opponent. What is And this is something that so many players forget about. So, for example, what pieces of my opponents are good? What are bad? How can I use that to my advantage? What plans is my opponent trying to do? How can I stop them while doing my own plans? Now, in this position... Do that yourself. So what 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 is good about the pawns? What is bad? What pieces are good? And what plans am I doing? What plans maybe am like my opponent playing? Uh, JM Round, thank, thank you for the donation. Very, very kind of you. Cheers. Thank you. And any donation is, is very appreciated. And remember, if you do do a cheer uh, and you hashtag it, 
with a charity. Some of the money goes to charity uh, for Christmas. So, well, when I was thinking about this position, the thing that seemed most important here and the best piece on the board, I hope you spotted it, is this knight here. This knight here is fantastic because this knight here is on what we call an outpost. An outpost is normally a square, normally you want to put knights on outposts and an outpost is a square where it cannot be attacked by one of your enemy's pawns. So this knight can't be attacked by c5 or by e5. Either of those moves, if my opponent had a pawn, would kick that knight away. Also, having a knight in the center of the board is the best place for a knight, and you can't get any more central than that. It will dominate Mickey's bishop. It's like a spider, that knight. Look how many squares it controls. It's a fantastic piece. If my opponent ever tries to swap that knight off, maybe by going here, here, and taking, well, then I take my C pawn, and I have a very nice structure, and, and you know, that would be fine. Now, pawn structure-wise, you could say C3 is a bit weak, but it does support my knight. Mickey also has one very weak pawn, this pawn here. So this is certainly a pawn that I want to be attacking later on. Why? Because my opponent can't defend it again with one of his pawns, so it makes it weak. So this is a fantastic knight. My opponent's pieces are still quite bad. We so like when your opponent is not developed very well, Scott Post, thank you very much for the donation. Very, very, very kind. When your opponent's pieces are not developed, another thing you should be thinking of is, how can, can I strike now while my opponent is behind in development? Can I go, can I go now? Can I strike now? So in this position, yes, these are the general considerations, but what move should I now be playing? So have a think about it. Alex is also saying the knight on f5 is a very good square. That's true. But let's see, what would you play now if you were white here? If you were white here, what would you be playing? What plan would you be playing? And the plan I decided upon was because my opponent's pieces are... These pieces here, they are, they are very, very passive. And tell me to follow up. Don't just tell me one move, tell me to follow up. So Dylan is saying h4, interesting. But what's the follow up? So a couple of you have said g5. What would be the follow up if he takes that one? Uh, what would be the follow up if I go g5? So tell me to follow up, tell me the plan. Remember, you need to have a plan. You need to have a plan. Now f4 is interesting. But unfortunately, you lose the pawn on e3. Because remember, every pawn move makes a weakness. So every pawn you move makes a weakness. h4, what are you going to do if he takes that one? Tell me your plan. Okay, so Aldo has, has the right idea here. And so does the chair. Yes, so the move I now played, because remember, I am trying to attack. And the whole point of going g4 is to play g5. Why not play it now? And the point is, after he takes on g5, why did I move my knight to d4? Why? So that my queen was not blocked. Now my queen flies into h5. And all of a sudden, he has to be very, very careful here that he does not get checkmated. Because, let's say he defends his pawn on g5, because I'm threatening to take this one back with f6. What would be a good move for white now? So let's say he goes f6. What should white now play in this position? What is white's best move here? White to play. What would you play if white? So I'm going for his king. Let's think of ways to try to create some threats. Well, h4 or bishop d3. Which is the strongest threat? The strongest threat here, we might as well threaten checkmate and develop a piece that's not developed. We could swing the rook in. But there's something even quicker. Bishop d3. This gets a piece off our first rank. And it threatens checkmate. Let's say knight to e5. White to play in checkmate in three moves here. How do we checkmate in three moves now? White to play in checkmate in three moves. How do we do that? Who's going to get this first? White to play in checkmate in three. Or three. Or three. Three moves. <laughs> 
Free moves. White's playing checkmate in three, not four, not five, not six, but three moves. Not seven. Okay, well done to um, Pawn of... Uh, oh, that's from that horror writer. Oh, my God, I can't pronounce the name or, the, or, or, or that name. Kulufa. Oh, God, I really like the horror writer as well. Oh, what's his name? What is his name? Why can't I remember the horror writer? Call of... Uh, it's Call of Kulufa. What is his writer? Oh, God. Oh, dear, it's going to drive me crazy when I forget. I'm so good at forgetting names. Um... Okay, well, I can see someone who's going to get a block straight away. So let's do that straight away, shall we? We don't want to hear that going on, do we? I think we have... There we go. Banned. Boom! We ban him over here. Um, uh, Kulufa. Who, who's the guy who wrote those books again? Porn of Kulufa. Who's the guy who wrote the books? Tell me. Remind me the person who wrote the books. Who was it? Uh, yes, we, we've definitely we banned that. You always, you always, you always get weird people on the. It, well, he is banned, Rocky. He's banned. He's 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 banned for life straight away. Uh, actually, Rocky, um, maybe I'll make you a mod. Shall I make you a mod? Because it's quite hard. HP Lovecraft, of course. God dear, how did how did I not how did I not get that? Okay, so Rocky, let's let's make you a mod, shall we? Let's let's do that, Rocky. Uh, if if you don't mind, I mean you don't have to do anything you don't want to, but I make you a mod, uh, mod user. Let's do that, shall we? Uh, mod, yes, mod. Are you modded? Hopefully you're modded now. And Aldo's a mod as well. I mean, unfortunately, in the world of the internet, you always um, you just get you always get um, idiots, um, and you get people. I mean, one thing about you know being a, a figure on the internet, like I do do YouTube stuff. I do do streaming. Most of you are absolutely lovely. You know, 99% of you are really nice. We've got a great community here. Loads of friendly people. We all join in. We have some fun. We learn something. You know, it, it's 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 great. Um, but um, you get 1% of idiots, don't you? And, and these idiots, they uh, uh, they wouldn't do this in real life, I don't think, because they're normally... They're normally scared little fools, you know, or, or or wimpy little wimpy little idiots who who hide in their room and you know probably will will live with their mother until the age of sixty. Nothing wrong with that, but you know they they probably don't get that out the house ever. So they they try to take it out online, and and these things do come across sometimes, and we just have to deal with them. But I think everyone I know, uh, and I think the females get this uh, in chess more. So people like Fiona, people like Anna Rudolph, uh, the abuse some of them get is pretty disgusting, and um, you know it's it's really uh, it's really not not cool, and you have got to feel for them, and it does it can be quite upsetting, you know when it first happened to me, I, I you know I used to get quite upset, but I, I don't really I don't care anymore, you know, but it can be when people are saying horrible things, you know, but you know it's one of those things, um, and yeah, I mean they should just be banned. You get racism, it's, it's disgusting some of it. It's just, I mean any form of racism any form of bigoting at all we just can't have that we don't want that at all thank you very much um so uh thank you for subbing by the way naz Ravi. okay let's go back to the game now enough of that enough of that little little rant um oh some blondes yeah i'm not even gonna go there with that one I'm not even gonna go there with that one let's just leave that one shall we for now okay so the checkmate here you don't go queen check because now the black king may run away instead you go bishop check because this forces the king into the corner. And after this one, um, bishop g6 check. And um, king here. And now queen h7 checkmate. Because our bishop has trapped the king's escape. This is a very typical idea. Um, so uh, there we go. I don't think it was 10 minutes. It's just one of those things we have to talk about sometimes. I mean, come on, it happens. but And he's banned now anyway. We won't see him again. So f6 is not playable. So my opponent, Mickey, now was looking very nervous and he played a move to stop my bishop getting here. So this is another example of a quality chess player. You have to know what your opponent is trying to do. You, you try, you know, trying to do. I'm trying to go bishop here and checkmate him and you have to try to stop your opponent's plans. Chess is all about, all about um, pushing your own plans while stopping your opponent's plans. So now knight c5, stopping my bishop coming here. 
Now here, I really wanted to keep the queens on the board, but in actual fact, I think I must give up on ideas of checkmating black king. Because realistically, my opponent can defend very well here. Um, I can't really attack with a knight and bishop. One thing I also would like to mention is, instead of the move g5, knight to f5 was another option. Now, had my opponent met this move with, say, queen e6, what should white play here? So we're just going back a couple of moves at the moment. Yeah, Adams is pretty hard to beat, let, let alone checkmate, you know, let alone to do anything to. Adams is just bloody good. He's such a good player. I mean, he's a, he's, he's a legendary player. In actual fact, when Eric Hansen was asked, who is your favourite player of all time? Eric Hansen of, um, uh, of Chess Bras. Uh, Eric Hansen said his favourite player of all time is Mickey Adams. So that's his favourite ever player is the guy I got a chance to play here. It shows you uh, how he's, uh, you know, how he is in the chess world. Okay, we're here. Quite a simple tactic. Queen takes d5, winning a pawn. And this is, remember that knight is a very good knight. And the point is here, I can win the queen back now with this one. Uh, chess bra. What did I say? Chess, uh, uh, look, chess bros, chess bra. You know who I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking about. And and I now I'm a pawn up in the ending. But what 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 would have been a good move for Mickey if I played knight f5 here? Let's see it. So what would have been a good move after knight to f5? He has said that. Yeah, yeah. I've seen him say that in the interview. So with this move, what is a good move here for black? So what is a move that I might be a little bit concerned about? A little bit concerned about here. Why didn't I play this? Queen c5, well, queen c5, I would now play queen to d4. And because I'm threatening checkmate here, I expect black has to take here. And now I straighten up my pawn structure. And I think this is a very good structure for me because this is very, very weak, this one here. This is a very weak pawn. And I think I'm doing very well here. I'm still, I'm going to probably win that pawn and win the game. I think I would even win, win the game against Mickey here. And the same actually goes for queen e4. If queen e4, I probably go here again. And again, I threaten checkmate, so we might get the same thing. I wasn't scared about this. What was I scared about here? Because this is a normal aggressive move, but you've got to try to consider your opponent's best responses. Well, yes, you've got to have more confidence, Naklu Balm there. Naklu Balm, if I said that right. He had the right move, but he said, well, I don't know. He said, Queen F6, I don't know. Well, if Queen E5, uh, Mary Hatman, I think just Queen D4 again, because he can't move his knight now. And I actually want to swap queens, I think, in this position. Uh, thank you for the cheer out there, bad axe. And again, if you do do a cheer out, some of the money goes to charity. Some of the money goes to charity. So not that one. The best move, and the move I was worried about, was Queen F6. And the point of this move is, he's threatening to take on C3. So if I go queen takes d5, he now wins my rook, because it's check. If I play queen to d4, which is the only move I want to play, he now has a good move. And the good move is knight to e5. And he doesn't need to exchange queens. His knight is aiming for here. And if I block that one, what would be a very good move for black now and why? Why? What would be a good move from black now and why? What should black do and why? You need to remember, you need to have reasons, definite reasons verbally for the moves you play. So why the chair? Why? Why? I mean, I know it wins a pawn, but why else is that such a good idea, the chair? It wins a pawn, but yeah, it gets rid of the active knight. Very, very good. So here, black can now get rid of my knight. And all of a sudden, what has happened if we go to this position? Well, maybe he doesn't even take that pawn because if he takes that pawn, I might get some attack. He could probably can take it. But even if he doesn't take the pawn, all of a sudden, what has happened to my position? If we go back a couple of moves before I entered into this, in the position before, in this position, I've swapped off this knight for this bishop, haven't I? That's basically what's happened. I've swapped off that knight for that bishop. Whenever you exchange minor pieces, so a knight for a knight, a bishop for a knight, a bishop for a whatever, 
not whatever. You have to think, is my piece better than their piece? Yeah. Hey, Bigfoot. Hello, sir. And by the way, I'm streaming with Bigfoot on Monday at 12 midday GMT. So we're doing a joint stream. Never done that with Bigfoot before, so it should be should be a uh, should be a lot of fun. So we're doing a joint stream on Monday. I'm sure we're going to enjoy that one. I think we're going to do a bit of hand and brain. A bit. Uh, he's probably going to crush me at some blitz games. You know, a joy. Yeah, a ju duo stream. Do I? What? Well, can't even speak today, can I? It's a ginger foot stream. I like that liquid air product. That is clever. That is clever. Ginger foot. That is our nickname. Uh, oh, you're going to trash talk me all the time. I'll go easy on me, Bigfoot. Look, I have to say, if you just joined in, uh, the most scariest moment of... I'm just going to do this again. Let me just go. One of the most scariest moments of this stream was when I went to learn and I pressed this button. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Did you have your eyes closed? Did you see that? That was a scary moment. Okay, um... Anyway, so why would I want to swap off my fantastic knight, which we talked about is brilliant, for my opponent's crappy bishop? This bishop is crap. So that's why I didn't play knight to f5. Now I'm just going to talk a little bit more about this game and then we will uh, move on uh, to something else. And I'm still sticking with uh, the idea in this stream of giving some tips. I'm starting at high level. I'm going to move down, maybe give you lower level guys some practical tips. And um, in this position, I went into the ending. My opponent now played f5. What is a good plan for white here? So um, I like my position. I think I'm a lot better here. His bishop is very bad. My knight is very good. So what is a good plan for uh, my for me now? I was very surprised when Mickey played this move, but maybe he had to because his other options were even worse. For example, if he defends the pawn on d5, let's say he goes rook d8, I was going to play f3, covering this square, king d2, bishop d3. So let's just play some moves. How does he develop? Bishop here, king d2, rook c8, bishop d3, and now I have rook g1, and I have my h-pawn coming up the board. And this knight wins the game for me, I think. So that's why Mickey played f5, but I'm still surprised to see this. So what is a good idea now? And remember, you have to think of more than... Don't just tell me one move. Give me a verbal reason. If you can see the plan, give me a reason. Give me a reason to play the plan. Well, Mary Hatman saying bishop h3. Well, the problem is you've got to think about your opponent's ideas always. With this move, my opponent is maybe coming to e4 with a knight. Maybe coming to e4 with a knight. Maybe. So if I play f4, it does it does make that piece bad. But after knight e4, look at that knight. That knight is a killer. So what move should I do here? Uh, what move should I do? This pawn is not such a worry because it supports my knight. I'm not worried about that pawn. I'm more worried about this knight coming here. What should I do and why? Well, SWS14 has the right move, but he's not giving me a reason. F3 is okay. F3 is okay, but there's a better plan. The best plan here, without a shadow of doubt, and the move I played is bishop g2, because I don't just cover that square, I create a threat. And we might as well create threats in life. And now my opponent, this, this creates the pawn. So my opponent now played knight to e4. And what should I do now? And this is all part of the plan with bishop g2. SWS, you summed it up right. I can now swap the knight. And why is this a good plan? Let's go back before I play bishop g2 and ask ourselves that question, which I asked a minute ago. Which piece do we think is better, the knight or the bishop? Simple question. Which piece is better? Is my bishop better or is his knight better? I came to the conclusion that his knight is better than my bishop. Why? Because his knight can come in, it can attack my rook, it can attack my pawn on c3, it can maybe exchange itself off on e6 for this knight, and my bishop, I didn't like my bishop, what's my bishop doing? I can come here, but I only really have one idea to attack that pawn, nothing else. So 
Another consideration is if I swap the bishop off for the knight, as Martin, Merry Hatman, is saying, I leave myself with this knight versus this bishop. And as we said before, this knight is fantastic. This bishop is garbage, especially now this pawn's here. It's blocking the bishop. So I played bishop g2, knight here, and now we just took it off. And here, I actually think this is probably a pretty much winning position. Mickey Adams man managed to draw this in the end. Ah! 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 Ah, oh, I thought I was going to beat him. But this is a fantastic position. This can never be moved. This is a fantastic knight. This is a fantastic knight. Look at it. It dominates the board. It dominates squares. Now, had I found the right plan here, I think I'm doing well. And I, I kind of nearly did. This position is all about trying to continue with my plan, but stopping my opponent's plan. And now, this is really high-level thinking. I don't think many um, players would have found the right idea here. But, okay, goodbye, Jobius. Goodbye, Jobius. Uh, thanks for popping in. The idea... Uh, the Basically, what I want to be doing is really get my king somewhere like D2 or somewhere over on the queen side to defend here. I want to activate the one piece that's not doing anything, my rook here. So I either put it on G1, where he has to go rook F7. Or I try to get my rook in the game like this, where it's quite active. Later on, I might even, if I get a chance, put my king on f4. Imagine my king got to f4 for the ending. That'd be fantastic. I'd be winning that one. I don't move my knight for now because my knight can never be attacked. It controls so many squares. I maybe use my h-pawn to attack here. So these are my plans. But what is my opponent's plan? And this is something that, again, when, I'm, when I was teaching lower rated players the biggest mistake that lower rated players played and um well there we go there's another ban isn't it uh god there's a lot of saddos around aren't there i feel sorry for these guys you know what a sad sad individual man <laughs> oh dear okay uh can, who's gonna ban him first so what, what we do to ban him you left click and you go ban user there you go out you go goodbye Goodbye, you sad, sad character. Um, so what we do here, we need to think what Black's plan. So what is Black going to try to do here? If Black doesn't do anything, I just do all the plans I was talking about and I improve my position slowly. So what should Black be trying to do? And this is so important. The best way for, I think, most of you to get better is start thinking about your opponent's ideas and aiming to stop them. Arnold the Hobbit, congratulations. Fantastic. Arnold the Hobbit, you have hit the nail on the head. Well done. That's not an easy plan to find. Plocrux, well done. Because my opponent wants to play f4. Why does he want to play this move? Well, I played rook b1 in the game. I'll show you the game first, and then we'll have a look how I could improve. Now, my idea, I thought my opponent wanted to develop his bishop and develop his rook. This is what I was aiming against. I thought my opponent wants to go bishop d7, and maybe rook to a8, rook on a to e8, normal ideas. But my idea was, with this one, he can't go bishop d7 because I win a pawn. And if he plays after rook b1, b6 first, what is a very good move for white now? I activate the rook, rook b5. I'm attacking this pawn. And also, my rook can come round and in the game this way. You see this rook? So bishop d7, rook d5. And here, he's in a lot of trouble. This bishop hasn't got any good squares to go to. I can win a pawn whenever I want, but I probably don't rush to win that pawn. I was looking at the position rook d8. I can now win a pawn with knight takes here, but then I get rid of my good knight for his bad bishop. So I don't rush to win this pawn. It's not running away. For example, if I take here, let's have a look at what happens if all the pieces come off. Yes, I'm a pawn up in this ending, but I've got rid of my good knight. And now my opponent can start getting counterplay. Maybe I'm doing well here, but it's not clear. So that's why I played it. But I allowed the move f4. And this move was a very good move. Why? Because my opponent gets rid of one of his weak pawns. That pawn was weak because it was on a square where it's very passive. He also allows his bishop to come out into the game later on. He also has chances to activate the rook now later on on this file. So this was a move I need to stop.
if I want to win this game. And I think this is the key moment of the game. Maybe I was winning later on as well. But we can see if he's able to play f4, then his position improves. Okay? His position improves. If he can play f4, this is his plan. So if I can stop him playing f4, fantastic. Now, some of you have suggested I play f4 myself. I don't like this move because I think my opponent gets rid of another weak pawn. Having a pawn, a little little tidbit here, having a pawn on the same colour square as your bishop in the ending is normally bad because it gets in the way of your bishop. It's very bad. So I think here he can get rid of this weak pawn. He takes on pass on. And now I've got another weakness on e3 here. So I don't like this so much, f4. So can anyone find, and I think this is a super grandmaster idea here, um, anyone find um, the way to do it? Uh, I, I, again, I, I, find, I, I love these comments. Bozo the Clown, I really, really tried to watch your stream, but it's unbearable, even though I'm typing this now and I'm still in your stream and I've been here for an hour and a half. Um, oh, my words. Is that is that Bozo for me or Bozo? I don't know. Either way, Bozo, do us all a favour and sod off. <laughs> I mean, it's it's really weird. How, why did you watch for an hour and a half? You've not got anything better to do with your life than sit through something for an hour and a half that you don't enjoy. I mean, you must be bloody weird, Bozo. Maybe you're one of those weirdo clowns who jumps out at people. I don't know. Go away, Bozo. <laughs> oh, for Bigfoot. I don't know. Oh, really? Is, is it? Come on. Come on. Don't be. Don't be. Okay. Um, I don't know. I'm just leaving it. Let's just leave all bad comments away. We don't want to be. He meant for. I uh, don't be nasty to Bigfoot. Just don't be nasty, man. You don't need to be nasty. You don't need to say you don't like it. You don't need to say if you don't like saying you don't like it. Loads of people hate my streams, which I'm actually quite proud of. If everyone liked my streams, I'd be doing something wrong. I'd be doing something wrong. I think you got to have people who hate you. It helps you in life. I think it was Winston Churchill, wasn't it? Winston Churchill. Who actually said, Winston Churchill actually said, uh, if no one dislikes you in life, you're doing something wrong. As in, you know, you're not living up to, you know, you've got to, you're going to have to, you're going to have to have different views to some people. You're going to have to do stuff that people don't like. Anyway, back to the game. Anyone got an idea? I'm digressing a bit today, aren't I? Am I really that angry today? Didn't get enough sleep yesterday. That's what it is. I apologise um let's let's go you know you have yeah i mean you have to you have to basically have upset someone in your life otherwise you're not living up to your principles you're agreeing with everyone you've got to stick to your principles you know oh my words look at this sado here okay so anyone remember um well what would you do how do you stop this idea of f4 how do you go for that how do we stop this one how do we stop this one how do we stop that one anyone idea so this we know now what um, black wants to play. Is there any way we can stop f4? Because remember, this is what chess is all about. Thinking about our opponent's moves and aiming to stop them. So how can we do that? Any ideas? Now, knight b5, I don't like because my knight is in a very good square and I'm not sure where the knight's going. Do you have an idea? Is it really going to c7? I don't think so. Is it going? And I've t I've said that I mentioned f4 being bad because black just takes it, and we've created two weaknesses here. So I don't like f4. That's not the right move. There is a move here, which I think would have won me the game. Oh, chip hunt! Brilliant, chip hunt. The way you found that that is, I honestly think finding that idea, chip hunt, is grandmasterly. It's grandmaster strength idea. Uh, and I, I really do, I really do think you've done a grandmaster strength idea there, um, because um, I don't think that's a good idea, Aldo. Because you, you're opening up lines, and also maybe the bishop gets to e4. I don't like it. I think it opens up too many lines, weakens e3, creates another pawn weakness. I really don't. I really don't like f4. Takes knight takes. Let's say now, for example, black gets his bishop developed. He can get his bishop here, he gets his rook here. And you're opening up... I don't think you should be opening up lines when you have a knight versus a bishop. I think in principle, when you have a knight versus a bishop, you should be keeping it as locked and as closed as you can. 
Um, I think opening up lines is not good. You want to keep the bishop closed. So I don't like that. Uh, you know, I, I mean, maybe, maybe it's okay, Aldo. But I, I personally wouldn't want to do that. You know, and even if you get the king in, I mean, even if you do this, even if you go king here, I mean, let's just say bishop here, for example. King here, check, king f4, rook here. I don't know. I, somehow I feel that, you know, you might win a pawn even, but I don't think it's going to be enough. I mean, even uh, even bishop here. Suddenly his bishop has opened up. I don't like it. Maybe it's okay. Maybe that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. That is just my opinion. Uh, my opinion of uh, the position. So, uh, I don't know. But it's, it's, it's different. Because the I think what the winning idea is here, and an idea that was pointed out earlier, is to castle queenside. And I think this is a fantastic idea. And we just want to stop the f4 move. Because now our rook is coming to g1 straight away. And if black tries f4, which is the one idea I think we're trying to stop, I can now play rook g1, attacking g7. He has to defend that one. And now we simply take on f4, and we've won a pawn. And we are probably going to win the game. Um, the king comes into e3. And we're a pawn up. We keep all our advantages. This must be a winning position. And if we play this idea of castles, if black doesn't play f4, we stop him playing this very important move. And, and I think this is just this is just a very clever idea to get the rook here. Now we may, I was also thinking about playing king d2 here. But maybe, just maybe, my opponent can play f4 anyway, Mickey. And if rook here, he now takes here with check. And after king takes, we do win a pawn. But this is very similar to the actual game position. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the game position. Even though I've won a pawn, my opponent has managed to swap off two of his very weak pawns. And if we compare it to the game, Mickey played fantastic. He played f4. And after the game continuation... I do win this pawn on e4, but Mickey is able to get very good defensive position here. And his pawns are very hard to attack. And even though I'm a pawn up in the game, this was very hard to win because my remaining pawns are not very good. They're all split up. So it's better for me, but to actually win this one, to actually win this game, it's really not easy. Um, so... That is that's that that this is what happened, and then we got to an ending later on. So let's go a little bit first forward. Forward, we messed about. We got to an ending where I was a pawn up, and the ending was well. This was the ending, but I think this is a drawn ending. So I did manage to get to an ending where I was a pawn up, but it ended up in a draw later on. Um, so I think it's probably a drawn ending this one. So I kind of wanted to share with you uh, that game and my thought processes through preparing that one i'm talking about the opening idea the opening idea in this game was this idea of playing g4 now i also want to share with you other examples opening wise where you guys at home might want to experiment with this g4 idea um so let me give you a list of them because again when you see a theme when you see a theme you want to bet, keep that theme in mind and, and use it in many examples. That's how you get better at chess. You maybe see a tactic and you uh, use that tactic and you sort of you see that tactic in many different positions because the pattern is the same. So here, G4, and I showed you the Grizzchuk game where you can do it in a similar kind of position against this. And remember, to make G4 work, it works a lot better when h6 has been played because you have a target to attack. Uh, another example I found was, and this wasn't quite as strong, another example which I quite liked was to go bishop g5 first. And this is what I was going to play against Mickey. And after castles e, let's say e3, h6, rather than putting the bishop on h4, I thought this might be another way of doing it. Put the bishop here, then try to play g4 next move. g4, g5. This also struck me as being very, very interesting. Um, because again, even though it looks like I've wasted a tempo, 
I've tempted my opponent into playing h6, so now g4, g5 has a purpose. So let's say he goes knight bd7. I get the same position I had against Mickey, but my bishop is on f4 instead of h4. Um, so g4 here was another idea of playing it. There are many little ideas where this g4 comes up. I just thought, you know, it's well worth thinking about when your opponent has gone h6 to throw the g-pawn. I mean, with the black pieces, I'm going to turn it around. You can even turn the colours around. Again, when when is g5 a good move? When can g5 be a good move? So I'm just thinking of these um, off the top of my off the top of my head. So another, you know, g5 can be used a lot when there's a pawn on h3. One a DVD I have done is on the black line. You can go and look at my free lessons on this on YouTube. The black line is an opening where you play this idea of e5 but first of all you do this i'd say this is stage one you get e5 in stage two is to develop your bishop and to control these squares with your queen so for example let's do some normal developing moves bishop here c6 this also controls some squares maybe i want to go b5 so a4 my queen now comes out controls these two squares in a lot of play, probably play bishop e7 first to stop knight g5. Because if knight g5, I can castle. So let me get the move order right. That would be quite embarrassing. Um, white castles, queen here. And now a lot of players play h3 here. Why do they do that? Because they want to develop their last piece. But if they go bishop e3 straight away, then the move knight g4 is a very annoying move. This move here is very annoying. So a lot of players in this opening play h3. And now, because they've played h3, it's the same idea that I was just showing you against Mickey Adams. Even though it's a completely different position, as soon as you've seen one idea once, and the idea is a more positional idea, it's not a tactic, it's not a pattern. When you see a pawn on h3, you can think, well, hang on a minute, you know, maybe if I get a pawn to g4, I, I can I can start to I can start to, you know, open things up. Open the things up. Um, so one plan here is actually to play h3. And after h6, and after bishop e3, g5. And this is a very fun plan. And I've had this in quite a lot of games where, let's say, white plays a5. Now you can go g4 straight away. But even better is to first move the knight to g6. Because these two are like a traffic jam. They get in the way of each other. It's just, yeah, it's, it's basically a positional plan, this I'd say. It's not a tactical plan, it's a positional plan. And I've had this kind of thing occur in many games where at some point you play g4 and it works a lot better because there's a pawn on h3. So, you know, these things are just kind of worth bearing in mind. And Mary Hatman, you're right, Kramnik played g5 in, in the Berlin, the similar idea. There were many other, there are many other ideas where this, this idea... Uh, has become winning. You can use it with black, you can lose it with white. And once you've seen a, a, a positional idea once, this is how you improve your positional understanding. Um, as a rule of thumb, when h3 has been played, or h6, and you haven't castled, then you can certainly consider g5, g4, or, as in the game with Mickey, the other way around. Now, there are certain rules that I would say when this can be considered pushing your g-pawn so number one is when you haven't castled and there's a pawn on h3 but i think it's very important to first have control over the center of the board some control for example here i have quite good control over the e5 square if you don't control the center if you don't control the center of the board then i think pushing on the side of the board will not work and if you compare this to my game against Mickey, let's go back there, where I played g4 here. Okay, uh, not here because this was a different game. It was actually had a pawn on h6, so here, of course, where was it? Let me bear it. In this position, I haven't castled, so rule number one works. My opponent has played h6, so I have a target. And rule number three, I have some control over the center. I've got mainly these two pawns here in the center so you need to be able to control the center of the board aldo's pointed out another one there's loads of ideas there's g4 so again these are all positional ideas there's two sheer off gambits i can think of 
Another one, let me show you another one, is in the semi-slav. And this is an opening which occurs quite often. This line here. And now after bishop to d6, what do you play here? The difference here is that h6 hasn't been played. You can sometimes do g4 when h6 hasn't been played. When you have good control over the center, when you haven't castled, and often if you can castle queenside soon, it helps. So this move was invented by Shearoff in this position. You can play g4 in this position as well, and you're just trying to now attack that knight. So this is another another way it works. So there's certain certain times when it is strong, certain times it's not. Aldo's pointed out another gambit. There's many times. So you've got to kind of think like this, but I just wanted to show you this kind of idea how I came about thinking about this. Okay, now to end the stream, I think we'll end with a puzzle, but I wanted to give some advice. I've given advice at the start of the stream for, I would say, people, tournament players who, who play a lot of tournaments on the board, how you can improve. I'm not going to go over those again. I basically said chess base is great. Uh, Chess.com is obviously great. Um, and chess publishing as a website. Here it is. This is a great website, chess publishing. This is fantastic. That's more for professional players. If you're starting out in chess, what websites are good? Well, I have um, mentioned chess.com. The things that I find most useful about chess.com if you're a diamond member, let me just go through them again. These are some of the features which will help your play. So I'm just going to screen capture the board. What should you do? So you, the board, my whole screen, should I say. So let me just make the screen bigger. What things on chess.com may, may you not know about? And this is saying if you're a diamond member. So let me just capture the screen. Well, first of all, on the left-hand side, you can see these things here. <coughs> and obviously, learn is one of the great things um about being a, a diamond member so you go to learn and let's see you've got loads of things tactics i love the tactics i don't actually use them so much myself because i actually prefer looking at books for tactics because i read them on the train and stuff like that but tactics great way to do it lessons you've got lessons and the videos i think are my favorite i actually look, look at a lot of the other video ones except when yeah i don't i'm not going to press that button again moving dutchman i pressed it once that's enough you can do all try all these things out they're great to help you and they're all interactive so these are great things obviously talking about other websites as well i mean i know a lot of you mentioned lee chess um lee chess is fantastic as well Let, let's not lie Chess.com is brilliant. Lee Chess is brilliant if, if you don't want to spend your monthly subscribership. It hasn't got as many videos. It hasn't got as many training tools if you're serious about getting better. But if you want to play and you want to have fun, Lee Chess is a fantastic free domain. Um, I mean, I really... The way I got... When I jumped up rating-wise, the way I, do, um, I jumped up uh, was... I mean, I, I'm a bit old school. This, this book here... This book here got me about 200 ELO points stronger. And the book here was, and it's a bit stained. It's Brilliancies and Blunders. You can see, I don't know, it's really like old now. Um, thank you for subscribing there, uh, we'll see Mike. And this book has basically got loads of puzzles on. Now the way I got strong, stronger was in the bath. And I've told this story many, many times, many, many times. I can see it's going to be the old Lee Chess uh, uh, arguments now. Lee Chess is fantastic. Don't get me wrong. It's free. Um, Chess.com is fantastic as well. You've got, you know, it just depends what you want to pay for and how serious you are, you know. And this basically had loads of puzzles in. And I used to sit in the bath when I was a kid. And I just used to sit in the bath and solve two puzzles a day in the bath. And after a month, my tactics got so much better. And my results in chess got so much better. So I became 200 points stronger, ELO rated, by solving puzzles in the book. It doesn't have to be this book. This is one of my favorite ones, Brilliancies and Blunders. Cool. I think that's coffee on the front. Um, and the, any tactics book, get a tactics book if you like books. If you don't, now, this is before apps, get a tactics app. Do it on, try to really solve them. You know, don't give up. Don't look at the answers. Try to look ahead. You know, dude, that's a great way to get better. Puzzles. But don't, you don't give up too early. Because in a chess game, if you give up, you lose. You have to train your mind up. Um, other things I can say that will help you improve. Just work out what kind of style you are. What kind of style are you? 
Are you an aggressive player? Are you a positional player? If you prefer attacking chess, pick the right openings. For example, if you're a, if you're an attacking chess player, let's say you're black, um, what should you play? be playing against e4? Well, you've got to know what style, what positions do you prefer? style and stick to that opening another opening that is quite counter-attacking I like a lot is the French defense but certainly do not play a boring opening don't play the um, the Berlin opening but if you're a positional player and you like endings then what you should be playing you shouldn't be playing the Sicilian you should be playing the Berlin so you have to pick an opening that suits your style and suits your style suits your style so this is another thing to bear in mind don't pick wrong openings that are, are you know for that are wrong for you learn try to think how you learn best is it books or is it videos pick the one there's great dvds out there on openings you know the ginger gm ones are fantastic the chess based ones are great um i think i should learn e5 as well aldo i just haven't got around to it. i'm too lazy i think you're right aldo i need to learn it i certainly do um but yeah, you've got to think about these things. Um, also, what about coaches? Are coaches worth it? Is is getting an individual coach worth it? My personal opinion is uh, they cost a lot of money for a start. So you have to be very serious about it. Um, I mean, if you're going to get a grandmaster as a coach, probably one hour of a grandmaster is anything from $60 to $100 an hour. You know, like anything else in life, if you're getting one of the best in the world, they're going to charge a lot. I don't do coaching, by the way, myself. I just do these things for free and videos, which I hope you guys buy to support what I do. YouTube videos, you should check them out. But coaches, I would say, some people swear by them if you've got the money. I don't think they're that great, uh, to um, to be honest. To be honest. I mean, I really don't. I, I don't think... Uh, I, I, I think you can go a long way nowadays by, you know just sort of without a coach because a coach will try to force across their views on you and it might not be the one that's right for you unless you get a really good coach who understands your style so be very careful with coaches because you can spend thousands of pounds and you know not necessarily you know show for it i think spend your money wisely i mean for example another thing and this was something that macaulay a friend of mine said who's been in chess for his life he said um and this is really worth thinking about. Lots of people go on about free stuff. Free stuff is sometimes good, but it's worth spending like $20, $30 on something really premium than following something that's free that might be a bit shoddy. Now, I'm going to be honest, there's loads of stuff on the internet, on YouTube, which is complete rubbish, complete rubbish. There's loads of YouTube videos done by people they say oh this is the opening you should play which is just crap and if you follow those videos you're going to get worse so rather than watching free videos which may make you worse maybe just spend 10 pounds on a good video it doesn't have to be one of mine that's actually going to help you because getting artificial teaching you're learning in the wrong way let's let's imagine you're trying to drive a car and you're learning to drive a car and the guy said, yeah, just, you know, just you can you can have a couple of beers before you drive. It will loosen you up a little bit. You know, maybe maybe have a couple of beers. Use one hand. Make sure you're on your mobile phone because, you know, you might want to chat to the girl. You know, imagine if someone said that. I mean, OK, that's an extreme example. He's teaching the wrong thing. It's some, but if you spend a little bit of money, spend your money. Do spend a little bit of money on a quality thing rather than following something that is free and rubbish. I think that's so important as well. I really do. Free and rubbish, you know, and are you going to know it's rubbish? Well, if you go for, a re you know, really good, like Agar's books, if you like, books are great. Chess-based DVDs are great. Chess.com courses, they're all going to be good. They're all going to be good. They're all going to be good. Now, another thing, my last little thing I wanted to mention is... Hello, Blazer. I seen you around for a while. You've come just at the end of the stream. Another thing I wanted to mention, the one thing, a bit of advice I want to give you that I think will immediately improve your game is when you're playing a certain color, get
get into the mind of your opponent. Let's so many people when they're playing only think of their own ideas. They only think of their own plans. If you really want to improve at chess, you've got to get into the mind of your opponent and think of your opponent's plans and stop them. And this is something that would immediately improve your plan, prophylactic thinking, I guess it's called. And I'm going to give you an example of that now, a puzzle to solve. Uh, shall I be generous and give away a free DVD with this one? Shall I be generous and give away a free DVD? Uh, Say so you can you can play both playing both uh, colors of it is quite good. Um, we don't have to be a mind reader. You just got to you got to think what they're planning to do. Let me give you an example. Okay, this is white to play, white to play. Uh, watch should uh, how does white win this position? Okay, now think your white here. This is from a real game between a, a, a two grandmasters playing. This position, what, what, how should white win this game? And you're only going to get the right solution here if you start thinking about your opponent's possibilities. This is very hard. Shall I give away free D? Okay, let's give away a free DVD. Whoever gets the right solution here, I will give a free DVD. Free DVD. And it's not just one move. It's obviously more deeper than that. And I want you, the person who's going to win this has to tell me the whole combination and give me a reason in writing. A reason in writing. How do you do it? So you've got to tell me what the solution is and why. You've got to write it down. And you can have a free DVD from the Ginger GM shop. Do go and check out the Ginger GM shop. It's bloody excellent. If you want to buy a quality DVD, if you want to learn in the way that we'd be learning today and get better, they're very cheap. You can download them to your phone, the videos to your iPad, so you can watch them when you're doing stuff on your phone, DVD. And come on, think about this, guys. If you, the person who wins it, email me, simon at gingergm.com and pick one from our shop and I'll send it to you via digital download. So I'm looking at the answers. Who's going to get this? No one has got this. Can you get hard copies? No, we're not. I'm only going to offer one that I can send to you. I'm too lazy to go down the post office, to be, to be honest. I'm too, I'm too lazy to go down the post office. It's going to be, it's going to be a download. You can get a download. Okay, so have a think about this. It is hard. This is really hard, Aldo. This is not an easy puzzle, but it's beautiful. And no one solved this. If you go on the computer, shame on you. I will be, uh, I'll be absolutely, uh, um, uh, no one's got the answer. Rocky, that's an interesting idea, but it's not quite the right idea. Maybe you can win a pawn here. You can win a pawn here very simply. Let me show you how, how you can win a pawn. Rook takes here. Queen d4 check and you can win a pawn. That look that that must be okay, but there's actually something even stronger. Um, Rocky suggesting rook c6. I'm um, just thinking why that that is not a good move. Well, uh, queen d8 maybe. Is that right? Queen d8. Maybe rook d queen or rook d. Rook, we'll have a look. At, okay, so we had an idea of rook c6. Interesting idea here. What was the idea again? Let's have a look. And queen c5 now, trying to come here or here. So let's let's see if I can defend that one first. So how do I defend this? So I'm just this is not the answer I had. So I just need to try to see if I can. Can I go king here straight away? Maybe. It looks a bit strange, doesn't it? Can I go king here? Does this survive? Maybe I can go king here now, Rocky. And my king might better run away somewhere. Maybe. Nice idea, Rocky. It's not the idea I had in mind. So let let's keep trying. No one has got this yet. I'm looking at the answers. Well, it is tactical, this one, uh, but it is also a bit positional. Now, a lot of you have got the right first move. Okay, so I'm going to give you a clue now. The right first move is queen c5, and now black's next move is pretty much forced. Because let's have a look at his options. Well, if he goes king to e8, rook c8 check wins the queen. So he can't go there. If he goes king to f6, rook takes rook, wins a rook. So the only move he can do is king to d8. So that's the line you have to be looking at. So the first move is queen c5, then king d8. And I don't want to mid the pieces. Oh, Rocky, well done. <laughs> yeah, well done, Rocky. 
Rocky, 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 Rocky. Woohoo! So Rocky, you do, you actually win. You actually win. Uh, you you win. You win the DVD. Give me an email. I want to give you a free DVD, Rocky. Give me an email, Simon. Simon at gingergm.com. You should you should pop in the streams more often, Rocky. You, you, and and pick a digital download. I'll send you one. So the amazing idea here, and this just shows you the point. You've got to get into your opponent's mind. Is Queen C5 check, King here, and now if you try to force the wing, you can't win. Let's say you take there. Okay, so what? If you look at only your your ideas, you can't win. Let's say I go check here. Well, you lose. So what do I do here? What do I do here? If you only try to find your own moves, you lose. But if you start thinking about what your opponent's next move is, what your opponent's plan is, you will do what Rocky does and you will find a solution. Now, I'm going to say Rocky's a very strong player. I played him in... Uh, uh, in Telford in England and he's about 2300, 2400 but the idea here is let's now get into our opponent's mind if our opponent goes let's take one piece at a time let's take the queen if the queen goes queen takes rook okay so let's say I play h3 even though that's not a good move if you go queen takes rook queen f8 checkmate because the black king can no longer take there if the queen goes to a7 queen takes queen if the queen goes to a8, now it is attack, so I can go check. And after king takes c7, it's not on b8, it's on a8, so I win the queen. So what about black's rook? Well, in this position, if you go rook takes rook, now the king can't come to c7, so I can go queen f8, check, and I can take the queen on b8. I win a queen. Can the rook move anywhere else? Well, if the rook goes to d5, now you're not defending there, so queen e7's checkmate. And that is the same with the rook going anywhere else. It can't go anywhere else. What about the king? Well, the king only has one square it can try to move to, but now you lose control to c8, so rook c8 check, and you win. Um, so the only move that black can really try to get out of this situation is b6. Well, the chair, it's not really free stuff, is it? You normally have to pay to uh, you normally have to pay to buy one of our DVDs, but I'm in a generous mood. I'm going to give it away for free. Hopefully, you, some of you guys will buy some DVDs. This is the only move I'd be scared about because now we're forcing the queen away from its good square. What does the queen do? If I go check, remember, we take here. Black is winning. If I move the queen back on the C file, then I'm not coming in here anymore, am I? So if I go anywhere along here, Black just takes here, and I can't come to f8. If I move the queen anywhere on this diagonal, then you lose the rook, and the king can take the rook. So the only possible move in this position, if you start to think like your opponent, that black can play is b6. This is the only move. If he tries moving these pawns, it's irrelevant, because we can even just meet them and zugzwang him. So Rocky found the amazing move, the Zugzwang move, A5. And DS Twitch, you are right. This is what's called Zugzwang, when whatever move Black plays is going to make his position worse. Because now he can't move his B-pawn. We stop this one from moving because we take on pass on. And of course, this has given us a winning position. So Black can't move any of these pieces highlighted. Let's say he tries to move these pawns. Well, I think the nicest way to win now is just to wait. Let's block him. h4, if g6. Well, maybe I'll just move my king. King h2. You have to move these pawns. They're going to run out of squares. f5, I move my king. e5, I move my king. e4, I move my king. At some point, these pawns will not be able to move any further. And this position is total zugzwang. Total zugzwang. Because if you move a pawn now, I win a pawn. If you move your rook... I mean, it's a lovely solution. So... This shows you how important it is to think about your opponent's moves and then you get to the next level in chess and Rocky is, I like Rocky, I'm going to call you Rocky, I hope you don't mind now. And rather, Rakesh is a good name as well, Rakesh um, or Rocky. Um, if you start thinking like this, you will start finding moves like A5 which limits your opponent's possibilities and this is how you need to think in chess to take that extra next major leap forwards.
Okay, well, we're coming to the end of the stream. Uh, what's wrong with Rook takes Rook? Rook takes Rook. I check you now, and your king can't come to this square um, because in the last position it could, but now we win the queen. That's what's wrong with Rook takes Rook. Have a look at the position. I leave the position on the board. Try to find a move for black. Try to find a move for black. Have a look. Imagine you're black here. What do you play? There's no moves. There's no moves. You lose. You lose. This is You run out of moves. Now, we are coming to the end of the stream. A couple of things I'd like to mention. I'm going to stream tomorrow. I don't know if uh, 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 Bjorn is still about. Bjorn, are you still about, sir? Uh, Bjorn, uh, hopefully I want to do a lesson with Bjorn. If Bjorn is still about, I suggest I do a lesson with him tomorrow. Otherwise, I'll think of something else. I don't know what time I'll stream. I'll post it below. Follow me on Twitter or something. And I'll, I'll, I'll put it up. Um, maybe Rakesh could let me know if there's any spare time tomorrow and I'll fit around that. Um, my company, Ginger GM Videos, has released... Um, he was here briefly, Ad, I think. A new DVD. And the new DVD is on the Leningrad Dutch. It's a two-part DVD. Um, it is 11 hours in, in total. So if you go to our shop the ginger gm shop you can get yourself that dvd two grandmasters are presenting it me and an expert in the dutch and that is an aggressive opening that you can play against d4 we're basically concentrating on not that move that'd be a crap dvd <laughs> we're concentrating on this move oh yay bjorn you are here okay brilliant what, what time would suit you yay bjorn uh, hello yay bjorn have you got a particular time i'm pretty flexible tomorrow maybe not in the evening because i might go down the pub might not, but you know. Um, uh, oh, should we go for the same time as today? Uh, can we do that? Yeah, Bjorn, would that work? So that is two to four o'clock, um, basically today. Would that would that work today, Bjorn? If you're there, uh, otherwise, let me know what time. Maybe we could, if you want to do a lesson, we can do some kind of lesson. Could be fun. Um, so yeah, so that's what we're we're doing recently. You can go to I'll put the I'll put our website in the thing, gingergm.com very simple you can check out the dvds there's, there's going to be something there that will help you um i do now if you see any streams with the charity thing above then do do cheer out because you can that you can raise a bit of money for charity and i'm just waiting for an answer for bjorn i'll be back tomorrow it looks like the same time streaming and hopefully um we will have okay brilliant two to four bjorn so that that that's that's great so we do two to four bjorn um tomorrow uh, and that's that's fantastic so we'll be same time um same time tomorrow i'll be streaming and i'm going to stream a lesson with bjorn bjorn is a about 1600 rating and um it will be me giving him a lesson and a lot of you guys will get a lot of tips hopefully that you'll better use in the lesson that will help your chess so same time tomorrow we'll do a stream the new London system DVD, when's that coming out? Hopefully uh, before Christmas. I, I will, of course, let everyone know when that's out. You can go and check out Ginger GM or follow me on Twitter. Um, it's down below and, and then you'll know when I'm doing next things. Okay, enough of that. Time to go now. And uh, Bjorn, we'll do a lesson tomorrow uh, and it should be a lot of fun. I look forward to that. Hopefully that'll be cool uh, to, to do a lesson with you, mate. And it's always great getting you on online, Bjorn, for, for a lesson. So... That, I'm looking forward to that one. Okay, everyone, thank you very much. I hope you got some interesting things that may help your chess there, some interesting lessons that may help you improve uh, in the future. And thank you for everyone who's done a cheer out. Thank you for anyone who's donated. Thank you anyone who's brought a DVD. Uh, fantastic if you're going to go and buy a DVD. Support this in any way by subscribing. Subscribe to the channel. Anything you can do to help is really good. Cheers for now. Goodbye, and uh, I'll see you all soon, tomorrow, and beyond. Uh, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow as well. Uh, same time, same place, Friday, 2 o'clock. Uh, goodbye for now.